Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about solitary bone cyst. In our previous lectures, we have studied about ossifying fibroma, fibrous dysplasia, osseous dysplasia, central giant cell granuloma, cherubism and aneurysmal bone cyst. And today we will discuss about simple bone cyst that is also known as traumatic bone cyst, hemorrhagic bone cyst, solitary bone cyst and idiopathic uh, bone cavity. It is a benign, empty or fluid containing cavity within bone that is devoid of an epithelial lining and that is why it is known as, known as pseudocyst. There are some cysts that are known as a true cyst because they have epithelial lining and here it doesn't have epithelial lining and that is why it is known as pseudocyst. It is common in the jaws. If you talk about cause and pathogenesis, it is uncertain and controversial. There is a theory that is the trauma hemorrhagic theory has many advocates has evidence by the widely used designation traumatic bone cyst. It suggests you know, that trauma to the bone that is insufficient to cause a fracture results in an intraosseous hematoma. Hematoma does not undergo organization and repair and it may liquefy and result in a cystic defect. Some affected patients may recall an episode of trauma to the affected area but this uh, anecdotal information is of uncertain significance and has not been subjected to detailed controlled analysis. Okay, other etiological uh, theory or uh, theories include inability of interstitial fluid to exit the bone because of inadequate venous drainage, local disturbance in bone growth, ischemic marrow necrosis, and localized alteration in bone metabolism resulting in osteolysis. Now we will discuss about clinical and radiographic features. It is most commonly present in the long bones and it is also present in the jaws. It is most commonly present in the patients who are 10 to uh, 20 years of age. It is rare in children younger than age 5 and is seldom seen in patients older than age 35. It is most commonly present bilaterally in mandible. And mostly there is no symptom and it is diagnosed on the basis of routine radiographic features or we can say uh, or rather we should say routine radiographic examination that is done for another purposes okay 20 percent of patient they have a painless swelling of the affected area pain and paresthesia may be present in few cases most commonly uh, the premolar and molar areas of mandible are involved okay if we talk about the radiographic features uh, there will be well delineated radiolucent defect in some areas, the margins of the defect are sharply defined. In other areas, the margins are ill-defined. It is mostly 1 to 10 cm in diameter. When several teeth are involved in the lesions, the radiolucent defect often shows doom-like projections that scallop upward between the roots. As we can see, there is scalloping between the roots. It is highly suggestive of traumatic bone cyst, but it is not diagnostic feature. It is highly suggestive feature of traumatic bone cyst. Here we can see it is the body of the mandible and there is a radiolucent lesion which is unilocular and there are scalloping present between the roots over here. It is a traumatic bone cyst cavity case. Okay, If you talk about the radiolucencies, it, is, uh, it may be unilocular or it may be multilocular. Here we can see unilocular lesion present over here at the apices of the um, tooth roots and the one important thing is that the teeth which are involved in the lesion they are vital okay if the lesion is large a cone shaped outline pointed at one or both ends in the anterior posterior direction may be noted particularly when oval irregular or rounded borders are possible as well okay uh, that as, as I have mentioned that the teeth which are involved they will be vital and do not show root resorption as you can see here they will not show root resorption okay it can be multilocular and multilocular radiolucency associated with cortical expansion and slow enlargement okay the multilocular uh, radiolucency as we can see over here at the body and the angle area we can see multilocular lesion you can see multilocular radiolucency so uh, it will no, you know will be associated with cortical expansion and slow enlargement 
Okay, when expansion is present, an occlusal radiograph typically demonstrates a thin shell of cortical bone that exhibits no further reactive changes. Extensive lesions they are most commonly involve the body and ascending ramus area of the mandible. Now we will discuss about histopathological features. The walls of the defect may be lined by a thin band of vascular fibrous connective tissue or demonstrate a thickened myo uh, fibromatous proliferation that often is intermixed with intrabiculi of cellular and reactive bone. These lining may exhibit areas of vascularity, fibrin, erythrocyte and occasional joint cell adjacent to the bone surface. Stringy lace-like dystrophic calcification may be occasionally present. There is no any evidence of an epithelial lining that is why it is known as the pseudocyst. The bony surface next to the cavity often shows resorptive areas, how shapes lacunae indicative of past osteoclastic activity. So now we will discuss about diagnosis, how we can diagnose these lesions. Surgical exploration is necessary to establish the diagnosis. In about one third of the cases, the lytic defect will be found to be an empty cavity with smooth, shiny bony walls. In about two thirds of the cases, the cavity will contain small amounts of a zero sanguineous uh, fluid, or rather, we should say zero sanguineous sanguineous fluid. Uh, sorry for the uh, pronunciation; <laughs> it's a bit difficult one. Zero sanguineous fluid. The mandibular neurovascular bundle may be seen lying free in the cavity. Okay, we will discuss about treatment and prognosis. Simple bone cyst of the long bones often is more aggressive. Intralesional steroids, injections or thorough surgical curettage will be done in such cases, which means intralesional steroid injection or thorough surgical curettage will be done in a simple bone cyst of long bones which are more aggressive. If we talk about the genetic lesions, then simple surgical exploration will be done. And it is done for the diagnosis as well as for the treatment. It is wise to curate and submit the small amount of uh, tissue obtained for microscopic examination to rule out more serious diseases. Even large defect may show normal radiographic findings within six months after, ex after exploration. If you talk about the recurrence, it is unusual, but it has been reported. Periodic radiographic examination should be continued until the complete resolution has been confirmed. If you talk about the prognosis, it is excellent. These are the references of this lecture. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed my lecture and if you enjoy my lecture, please subscribe to my channel and share this lecture with your friends and we will try our level best to make other videos on oral pathology and to make this uh, you know subject easier for you people so till my next video take care and bye bye